Hey guys, welcome to my Angular 2 mini-series. In this series, we're going to be covering the fundamentals of Angular 2. It will be multiple videos. I'm not exactly sure how many. I'm guessing between 7 and 10. Um, we will go over the differences between Angular 1 and 2, but I'm not really going to focus on the syntax of anything from Angular 1 because people that don't know it, it's just going to confuse them. All right, so we'll be solely focusing on Angular 2 in this course. So what is Angular? Before we get into what Angular 2 is and any differences, let's talk about what it actually is. So it's a client-side framework for building powerful, dynamic web applications using JavaScript. All right, so it runs on the client, meaning it runs on the user's computer in the browser on their machine. It doesn't, it doesn't run on any kind of uh, external server anywhere else. All right, uh, it's, it's referred to as what HTML would be if it was made for dynamic web apps. All right, we all know that HTML was created to build static websites, but if it was made to build dynamic web apps, it would look a lot like Angular. Okay, we have custom tags that we can add functionality to. All right, in Angular, they're called directives. So Angular has a very modular code structure, meaning that um, one part of the code is totally separate from another part, especially in Angular 2 where we're working with components, um, more so than Angular 1 where we had scope and controllers and all that stuff. Uh, components really make it very modular, uh, which is a good thing. So what is Angular not? It's not a library like jQuery or, or underscore or something like that. It's not a design pattern like MVC or uh, MVVM. And it's not a plugin or, or any kind of extension. Okay, it's a framework. And it's commonly used for single page applications or SPAs, which are web apps that load a single HTML page and then dynamically update that page depending on the user's interaction with the app. Okay, so we don't have a, a bunch of different pages like a, like a static website. So what's new in Angular 2? So Angular 2 is much different than Angular 1. So even if you know Angular 1, you're going to still have to do some learning because um, things are very different. So the, the biggest difference is components. It's component based. There's actually no more controllers. There's no more scope. Everything is done inside of the component. All right. It also uses a lot of ES6 or ES2015 syntax. Um, and it also uses TypeScript, which is a superset of JavaScript. And it really simplifies things like um, components and uh, metadata, things like that. It also uses reactive extensions for JavaScript. And this gives us observables. And it gives us a method to work with asynchronous data, uh, much like we did with promises in Angular 1. All right. And you can still use promises in Angular 2 as well. But observables, um, for the most part, work much better. So let's take a look at some of the reasons for Angular 2. Why, why all the changes? So for one thing, they wanted to make it more modular, more reusable code, whether that's code that's reused on the same application or another application. Performance, it is, it's faster than Angular 1. Okay, it performs better. There's a better learning curve. Uh, there's better mobile support. It uses the newer JavaScript syntax, ES6 or ES2015, and it also uses observables over promises. All right, there's other reasons as well, but these are some of the big ones. So TypeScript. TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript, and it compiles to plain JavaScript. All right, so it adds static typing, so we can define things as strings or numbers, Boolean or whatever it may be. They get it gets transpiled at runtime. So what that means is when we run the application, it then gets compiled into regular JavaScript and then the browser can can actually process it as JavaScript. All right. Now, TypeScript gives us much cleaner code and it also runs on all browsers. All right. So the JavaScript that it compiles is compatible with uh, most modern browsers. So some of the benefits of TypeScript, so it gives us class and module support. Um, it's more compatible with the ES6 or ES2015 syntax. It gives us a clear API library. 
uh, support for JavaScript packaging and the syntax is a little closer to something like Java or Scala or some other type of object oriented program language. So there's a lot of different ways to start to build an Angular 2 app. The most common way I think is to use the Angular 2 quick start. Okay, so if you go to the Angular IO website, there's a big button that says get started and that's going to take you to uh, kind of like a little tutorial that's going to tell you to download the quick start. So what's included with this quick start, there's a package.json file and that has obviously all the information. Um, description of the application that stuff but it also has all the dependencies all right so that you can just get the quick start and run npm install and it'll set all that up for you it also includes the app component every angular 2 application has a root app component and then all of the custom components are built off of that the bootstrap function that's the function that the app component is passed into and then that will bootstrap the angular 2 app uh, it also has the index.html file with all the different script includes uh, and also, of course, TypeScript along with the transpiler and the type definitions. OK, so the transpiler will convert the code from TypeScript to JavaScript at runtime. And if that sounds like absolute gibberish, don't worry about it. It's not as difficult as it seems. So if you look at the package.json file on the quick start, this is what you'll see for dependencies. Okay, we have Angular 2, obviously. System.js is a modules loader for um, common JS modules and AMD modules. ES6 6 shim has to do with compatibility and ES6. Reflect metadata, uh, reactive extensions, which is, uh, gives us observables, zone.js, concurrently so we can run different scripts concurrently light server is a, a really light development server that we can use uh, TypeScript of course and then typings which is uh, takes care of the, the the type definitions for TypeScript all right so hopefully I didn't bore you to death with slides in the next video we're going to jump in set up our environment we'll download the quick start and we'll go from there